This is Right Around Australia, the story of Neville Westwood and his Citroen Bubsy on Faith FM. In 2025, the incredible journey will be reenacting another incredible journey undertaken 100 years earlier by young Neville Westwood, who accidentally achieved the record of being the first person to drive right around Australia. Here is part four of his exciting story. The year is 1925. Neville Westwood was just 22, and Greg Davies a couple of years older, when they started out on their epic journey into the vast outback of Australia. They set off on their adventure from Perth on the 4th of August 1925, full of enthusiasm and confident they were doing God's work. They first travelled along stock routes to Mekathara, and then on to Marble Bar, a trip that was known as Australia's longest overland mail route. It was a 1950 kilometer round trip, and usually took eight and a half days. But if there was rain, it could take up to 19 days. John K. Ewers went on the mail run for fun in 1935 and gave a good description of the journey. During those long miles of sweeping plains and rugged hills, I felt somehow that I was nearer the real heart of Australia than I had ever been before. Bogs, blowouts, a broken gearbox, stations, gold mines in lonely places, sheep, cattle, horses, vast brooding solitude, camels, mules, dry riverbeds, and spinifex, always spinifex, such is the country through which the track runs. Ewers went on to describe the isolated country, the 62 gates they had to open and close at the Mount Fraser homestead, and the myriads of mosquitoes, midges, moths and beetles, and every flying and crawling thing they had to contend with at night. This was what Neville and Greg had to contend with, but they endured it all cheerfully, stopping at stations along the way to sell books. They were usually invited to stay the night at the stations, which they were very pleased to do. They had a scare, just after they left Mundiwindi. Neville writes, A big mob of cattle became curious, and started following us at a gallop. Petrol ran out. Greg made a dive to start unlocking his bag to get his revolver, but as I knew they were only following us out of mere curiosity, I didn't worry. Putting in some more petrol, I soon had the bus started again. From Marble Bar, they drove to Jasper Bar, where they had a refreshing swim, and then on to Condon, which they reached around 9.30 p.m. This was the beginning of the Madman's Track, a stretch of track notorious for its harsh conditions and lack of suitable drinking water. Few travel this road now, but it was the path prospectors had to trek, in the hope of striking it rich during the gold rush of 1887 to 1888. They either trudged the dusty track, or rode horses, or camels. Those with more money very wisely travelled by boat from Port Hedland to Broome. Neville drove the 515 kilometre between Pardue Station and Broome, but it was slow going. The rough, rutted cattle track through the scrub and desert slowed the little Citroen down to a near walking pace, and they had to often stop and clear the track of boulders, branches, and other debris. They bought fuel from farmers along the way to keep the little car going, but it was a hazardous journey. The track, with its harsh, barren conditions and lack of water, had been a nightmare trip to prospectors, and some had died along the way. It was dubbed the Madman's Track, and people joked that if someone wasn't already crazy to travel the Madman's Track, he certainly was by the time he finished. But Neville and Greg didn't consider themselves crazy. They were on a mission for God, and they knew he would care for them. They didn't know the disaster that lay just ahead of them. Stay tuned to Faith FM for the next installment of this series, Right Around Australia, the story of Neville Westwood and his Citroen Bubsy. For more information about this program, visit the website of The Incredible Journey online at tij.org.
facebook.tv forward slash RAA. Thank you.